Uh, about 10 years ago, you gave, an, you gave us an interview uh, and you, uh, you know, spoke about how things would be in 2020, which mm -hmm. is now just 10 years ahead. Mm -hmm. And you talked about, you know, the internet being everywhere in, you know, uh, uh, watches. And it's pretty much happening because mm -hmm. I do have internet in my mobile phone. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm no geek at all. And right. uh, so what... Uh, uh, is going faster or slower, you know, than you had predicted 10 years ago? 10 years ago, I predicted that chips would gradually become so cheap that you would have the internet, you know, cell phone, wristwatches, the internet everywhere. People laughed. Some people said, what? Impossible. And yet, much of this we have today. And in the next 10 years, I can predict that computer power will be so powerful you will have the internet in your contact lens so that when you put on your contact lens and blink you're online so if you want to see a movie you simply blink and, and you can see a movie website and if you're talking to somebody you can see their face your, your contact lens will recognize the face print out the biography and give you subtitles so you will speak to somebody in Chinese or Arabic because subtitles will emerge beneath that person. So you'll be able to create whole new realities just in your, in your contact lens. Now when the internet was first created, it was male. It was about war, nuclear war, dominating in a war against Russia. Now the internet is female. 51% of internet users are women. And they use it to touch people, to make contact with people, to play bridge, gossip, find out about the children. To shop. <laughs> that too. <laughs> right. So the internet is basically female nut. It's about touching people. So it's warmer. It's not mechanical. It's warm. And when you don't want to be on the internet, you just shut it off. As you were a kid, you built a 2.3 million electron volt accelerator uh, in your parents' garage. Mm -hmm. So you ended up in Harvard with this scholarship. But uh, uh, is it true that your atom smasher blew out every fuse <laughs> as you could break her in the house? That's right. I built an atom smasher when I was in high school. I was about 17 years old. Mm -hmm. It weighed 500 pounds. It consumed six kilowatts of power. So much power, I blew out all the circuit breakers <laughs> in the house. And my poor mother, you know, she come home and, oh, the lights are out. Where is the fuse? <laughs> and she would say, how come I, my son can't play baseball? Maybe basketball, maybe football. I'll, I'll buy him a football. <laughs> but it got me a scholarship to Harvard. And then that began my career as a physicist. But you don't recommend people to view it. <laughs> I don't recommend people blow up their fuses <laughs> and knock out all the electricity in the house. But, you know, I, 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 you may be familiar with the Iron Man, you know, Tony mm -hmm. Stark, the, the mm -hmm. hero. Uh, like yourself, he, he built an accelerator at home. And um, you uh, are a scientist and a celebrity as well. It's pretty much the case of Tony Stark, who is uh, a geek celebrity in the movie. Mm -hmm. uh, is science getting more glamorous, maybe? I hope so. You know, movies tell us that if you're beautiful and strong, you're at the top. There's a pyramid and the people at the top are just like the beautiful people. Everybody else is at the bottom. But as soon as you graduate into the real world, the pyramid goes <laughs> upside down. So it's only for three or four years that you have this very strange pyramid that Hollywood talks about all the time. In real life, Bill Gates. Bill Gates is the richest man in the world. He's not a football player. He's not super handsome and dynamic with muscles. And so people have to know what the real world is like. In the real world, it's talent, it's ambition, it's knowledge. That's what gets you ahead. That's what puts you at the front ranks, rather than simply being a big football star uh, when, you're, when you're young. So I think science is becoming a little more glamorous. I would hope so, because science is the engine of prosperity. Why do we have all these riches? Why do we have this great standard of living with medicine and computers? It's because of science. So science is the engine of prosperity. Yeah, and technology uh, uh, geniuses, they are not nerds, not necessarily anymore, right? Like mm -hmm. you think of Mark Zuckerberg or whatever, and they are like 
regular kids, and they make billions uh, out of their inventions, uh, but they are like normal people, right? That's right. Out of your garage, you can create a multi-billion dollar corporation. Uh -huh. I just had dinner with one of the people who invented Skype. Uh -huh. Out of nothing. Out of nothing, he said, oh, let's put video on the internet and created a billion dollar corporation just in a few years. So there's tremendous opportunity for people to jump into this game. Whole new areas, co companies, revenue that you can create if you dare to challenge uh, the status quo. Mm -hmm. So you are co-founder of the uh, string field theory. Mm -hmm. You are into heavy physics. And you popularize science as well. You write bestsellers. Mm -hmm. You are into TV series. You give interviews like this one. Mm -hmm. uh, are you criticized uh, in the scientific community? It used to be that way. Uh, Carl Sagan did a lot of television. Mm -hmm. And some scientists said, ha, that's, that's popularization. That's uh, demeaning. Uh, scientists don't do that. But times have changed because the Cold War is over. The governments are not going to give us money to build big machines anymore because there's no more competition with the Soviet Union. And so many of our machines are canceled. Uh, the, the machine in Switzerland, the Large Hadron Collider, we had a bigger one in America, the Super Collider. It was canceled in 1993 because we scientists cannot tell the taxpayer why tax money should go to support our work. Now, scientists are saying, yes, yes, please get on television. Tell the taxpayer we need science because there's no more Cold War. It's sad, but the Cold War helped to finance science. We would go to Congress and say, Russia. Congress would get nervous and, and give us money. We can't do that anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we have to convince the public to finance science. The lightsaber, a blade of pure energy of incredible power. It's the most popular movie weapon ever. There's something about its glowing blade and distinctive hum that fascinates everyone.